This discussion is quite late na because we are already in week 13, okay, right now. So, yeah, it's week 12, we're in. We are going to discuss the theories in language and culture. So, when we talk about theories, okay, these are some preconceptions. Okay, preconceptions of people outside, okay, who are looking to the reasons as to why these things happen. Okay, theories are like that. However, theories are not fully, okay, are not fully accepted by everyone. Kaya nga, theory lang siya. If it's accepted by everyone, therefore, it will be a law. Okay, it's called a law. But if not, it is a theory. Tapos, bago pa mo siya ma-prove, it, uh, it first become a hypothesis. Okay? So now, theories, kahit pa tana, there are um, evidences that had been Given, however, some people are still confused if these theories are really uh, manifested in every situation. Okay, so what theories are we going to discuss? Of course, in our subject, the language, culture, and society, we are talking about the relationship between the language and the culture. So here are our three objectives for today. First, we are going to determine the theories as what I have said. Differentiate linguistic determinism from linguistic relativity. And lastly, will be about the theories about the society and the language learning. After we discuss that, we relate it to why or how this happened in our everyday lives. Okay? So, the first theory, we have a topic to pick pa. Yeah, let's start na tayo. The Saphir Worf hypothesis. Saphir and Worf are the two, okay, these two people um, collaborated in order to form this hypothesis or a theory. So, it states that there are certain thoughts of an individual in one language that cannot be understood by those who live in other language. Do you believe in this? That when you cannot you cannot understand a certain language, okay, because I you you do not know their culture. If you are not familiar with the culture of that people, therefore it will be difficult for you to know the language of that or of those people. Okay? Second states that the way people think is strongly affected by their native language. Paano daw tayo mag-isip is very related as to what language we are using. So, this of your work hypothesis is divided into two concepts. The first one is linguistic relativity. Remember, ah, the Sapir Worf hypothesis talks about the relationship between the culture and the language, how, okay, how our culture or how the language affects our way of thinking. Can you please uh, read this three definition of linguistic relativity? Who wants to read this one? Anyone? Okay, Jacqueline. Linguistic relativity. Cultural differences in thinking are accompanied by linguistic differences between cultures. People who speak different languages perceive and think about the world quite differently from one another. Language influences the perceptions and thoughts of people thus affecting their behavior. Okay, so our cultural differences, okay, the way we believe, the way we acquire the beliefs, attitudes are accompanied Okay, by the linguistic differences. Meaning, if we have this set of languages, therefore, we have a different set of thinking. For example, look at this. This is a story of Liali. Okay? Liali has this severe epilepsy. Alam niyo naman yung epilepsy kapag natake, they have seizures, uh, right? Now, in the culture of Liali, they do not know what epilepsy is. They do not have a term called epilepsy. Okay? 
they only know this term, like wag dam. Ayan lang yung tawag nila doon sa sakit ni Diali. They only discover that it is epilepsy when they consulted in a Western medical doctors. Okay? Ngayon, bago sila magpa-consult doon sa mga Western, syempre doon muna sila sa locality nila. And they, and the doctors, or maybe the people there, told them that, ah, it's quag dam. And what is the meaning of quag dam? Uh, quag dam pen. The spirit catches you and you fall down. So you see that? Ayan yung definition nila. They do not know, wala silang idea about epilepsy because wala silang term or language for epileptic. But their term is quag dam pen. So, ano implication nun? Kung ayan yung definition nila. They thought that, uh, that being like epileptic, having those seizures, is lucky. Sabihin, mas swerte ka kapag nagkakalisures ka. Kasi yung spirit daw, sinasalo ka, therefore, you have um, good fortune. Okay? Someone is catching you when you fall down. Diba? So, that's their perspective. They look at it in a good perspective. However, in reality, okay, when you discover that a person is epileptic, therefore, you will say that, no, it's not really that good. Okay? It's, uh, they are having seizures. It is related with their health. They do not have a good well-being. Okay? So, that's the point. For those who are in wrong culture, they think that being epileptic is good. However, in the Western, since they have this term, they believe that being epileptic is not good. Okay? So, that's how they perceive their... Um, the certain, the, the, the culture that they are in because they do not have that term, okay? Another, look at this. Uh, in this comic strip, okay? In this comic strip, I want to, I want someone to volunteer to be this comic strip. Anyone? Yeah, let's have... We have a volunteer. Can you read this one? Narit na magbasa ba? Or baka nahihirapan kayo magbasaan. Um, can I call Joyce? Ito si Joyce. Nababasa mo ba? Miss Arceo? Mm -hmm. I think Miss, Miss Arceo is not here with us. How about uh, Mr. Vicente? Ah, yeah, sige. That's a Miss Martin. Pick up my dirty socks. Fetch me some chocolate. Hurry up, you. Hmm? I look at it a different way. Harry, how dare you order Andrew like that? He's your uncle and your elder. I mean, I'm third in line for the throne, while he's only fourth. They're action man toys, sire. Okay, thank you for that emotional and expressive. Thank you, Desiree, for that. Now, you look at that. That kid, okay. He is exposed okay, with a, a culture that believes that there is a differences uh, in their language. There is a differences with the fourth, okay, the third in throne, and the first in throne, or whatever. Because of that, it affected his or her uh, his behavior towards his uncle. He doesn't believe, okay, he doesn't believe that even though it is an elder, which I should respect him, no. Because in our, in his language, sorry, in his language, they have this form of, what do you call that? They have this form of, you respect the people depending on the throne you are in. Okay, and it is manifested in their language. Next, this one. There's these two girls. This is my friend, Teo. So, they greeted. And then, Teo suddenly comes in and is glad to meet you. And then, the girl, like a Chinese, a Chinese girl, like, did you just kiss me? So, what's uh, what's wrong with the comic strip? Or what can you infer from that comic strip? Anyone? 
based on the culture with language. What can you infer from this comic strip? Can anyone please uh, explain to me this one? What happened? And there's like an Asian, and it's look and it looks like the man is Western. Yes, Justin. Ma'am, for me po, uh, both, both individuals are from different countries po. Kaya ang nangyari po, yung usual way of greeting po non Chinese ay iba sa Western type of greeting. Kaya nung nagkakilala sila, and the way yung pag-approach nung Western guys sa Chinese girl is yung pag-beso-beso, parang nagkaroon ng conflict kasi hindi... Ganon yung way ng pag-greet ng mga Chinese people po. Kaya na-culture shock po siya, ganon. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Justin. So, as you see, there's a culture shock. Why? Because for the Western, their language of saying hi to a person is like um, kissing, uh, using their cheeks to, to touch someone else's cheeks. And it's natural. That's their culture, that's their language of saying hi. However, for the Chinese, maybe even us, Asians, we believe that it's uh, we are so, uh, how do you call this? Um, parang, yeah, we're, we're no, but conventional, diba? And at the same time, we just say hi. Just say hi, not like doing this thing. Kaya, nagulat itong si Asian. There is, okay, yes, it's already a common thing. There is a conflict as to what they believe. Correct, yeah, that's the term that I am looking for. Conservative. We are very conservative in nature. Because that's how we see the language, right? Okay. Any, um, any other examples about this? Like, uh, I already have this one. Um, in English, we usually say, for example, the base, okay, the base is broken. We will say mostly that uh, Justin broke the base. So you see the structure, Justin broke the base. Can you find a focus? Who broke the base? Can you focus natin? So meaning, ano may infer natin sa ugali? Westerns or the English speakers usually look at who is the one to blame. However, okay, however, in other countries, they do not blame that. They just say, the vase is broken. So you see, they focus more on the, uh, on the, on the action that is done rather than who to blame. So maybe, we, yes, what happened, we can say that those cultures do not look at who to blame. Their behavior is looking at the action. Pero sa Westerners, may kita mo na yung belief nila or yung attitude nila, lagi silang naghahanap ng masasisi. Okay? So, you see, that is linguistic relativity. Okay? We are looking at how the language shape our behavior. What is something unique about Filipino language? Sige nga. What is something unique about Filipino language that affected our belief, our our culture as a Filipino? Anyone? When you think about that, what is something unique? People are most of the time people say, ah yes, Jacqueline. What's your answer? point of po, po. Like kahit nagi English na tayo, like we always put point upon our words, kasi piling natin if we don't put point up, uh, we are disrespectful person. Ganun po. Okay, that's correct. Do we have an English translation of point up? None. Judy Ann, yes. and another thoughts? Ma'am, yung parang pagbigkas po, kunwari po yung pangalan po, Joshua, Joshua, ganun, parang mm -hmm. naapektuhan po nung pagbigkas po natin ng language, yung English, yung English po, yung meaning po niya. Okay, okay, yeah. We can include that. That is somehow unique with the Filipino. But then, uh, as we look on, how do this language has an effect with the uh, with our attitude? I see the answer of Mr. Ledesma about the nouns and the uh, the pronouns. Sorry, the pronouns of Filipino. If the pronouns of Filipino, we do not have 
a counterpart, a specific counterpart for he as in lalaki, di ba? Or she as in babae. We just say, ikaw, siya. Okay? Right? Now, what can we infer from this? Okay? What can we infer from having uh, a neutral, okay? We have a neutral way of pronouns. Therefore, we can say that Filipino somehow accepted, okay? Accepted that uh, people are neutral. We do not really care about the gender as long as we can say that siya, ikaw, as long as we can say that it is an individual. Okay? So, with that, with that form of language, our way of thinking is shape. And that is linguistic relativity. Okay? Let's proceed with the second, which is linguistic determinism. How is it different with linguistic relativity? So, just to make it um, easier for you to make a difference, linguistic determinism tells us that with our language, it determines what can we know, okay? It determines the extent of the knowledge that we can have. For example, if you are a Filipino, therefore, your extent of language is only like the culture about Filipino and anything around that. But if you know English and Filipino, therefore, your extent of knowledge will, be, will become bigger. Kasi dalawang language na alam mo. How about if it's three? Mas lalaki ng lalaki. The more language you acquire, the more knowledge that you will be able to know about this world. So that is linguistic determinism. It determines what you will know about specific things. Let's take this for example. Um, I want to volunteer here. Can you tell me which among the four colors is different? Anyone? Which among the colors the odd? Okay, select the odd color out. Sige, Jacqueline. First, second, third, fourth, or is there a difference? The third one, mom, it's much darker than the other color, but it's almost the same, but it's darker than the other color. Okay, thank you, Jacqueline. Berlin, how about you? Mom, same lang po, yung third na circle po. Perlene, uh -huh. uh, may I ask you, do you have difficulty on selecting which is uh, the different one? Um, wala naman po. Uh, but, do you have a hard time? But nakikita ko po kasi yung second po, parang light na ewan. Pero po mas dark mm -hmm. green eh. Ay, pangatlo. Dark dash. Ganun po. Okay, yeah. Someone says, a lugi sa color red. Actually, lugi talaga. <laughs> Kasi nga, it's about color red. Now, yes, uh, I think most of us will agree that we have a bit of difficulty in determining which is the odd one out. Because actually, the correct answer there is that everyone is different. Okay? All of these colors are different. Okay? They do not have the same. And then you will react, Mom, bakit gano'n? Di ba? Pare-parehas. Parang naman pare-parehas lang naman. Nag-illusion lang ba tayo na, ano, na pare-pareha siya? No. Because our language affected it. Why? Kapag sinabi ko, anong tawa ko sa first color? Ah, uh, siguro mo pwede siyang green or kaya light green. Ganun lang tayo, di ba? Ito, light green din o kaya green. Yan. Pwede yung dark ng konti, ganyan. Ganyan lang. That's how we describe the color, right? However, in some cultures, uh, they are very specific in terms of the color, the how they will call, or the term of each color that they have. For example, this one is they call Dambu, this one is Zuzu, and a lot more. For example, this one is distinguished by English speaker. Kaya natin ma-distinguish yan. Kasi, different. However, this is the culture I am telling you. The Himba tribe. For each shade of color, they have a specific name. Isabihin, they produce a language. Okay? They produce a word from the language they have with the different colors. Kahit kumunti ng 
uh, na iba lang ng konti yung shade, may tinawag na sila na language about doon. And because of that, okay, because of the variety of words that they created from the colors, they are very good in terms of determining the colors given to them. And that is the example of linguistic determinism. It believes that if our language gives us this set of words, it takes us the capability of what we can know. Okay? So the human tribe are very good in terms of telling the colors. They do not have difficulty. Malalaman agad nila na, for example, um, I ask a human, a human tribe to select the odd color out. They will tell me, Mom, no, everything, uh, every color that you have given is different. Okay? So that's how it is. That's linguistic determinism. Another this one is a book by your okay, it's also a tribe, and they do not use the word left and right for directions. Hindi sila gumagamit ng left and right. Mom, what do they use? Well, in their language, they are very specific in terms of direction. They will say east, southeast, southwest, even when you move. Diba ako ba kapag sinabi ko, halimbawa sa classroom, sabihin ko, um, uh, Perlene, can you please move on the right part? They will say that. I will say that. But, in this tribe, they will say, uh, Perlene, can you please move in the east-west, uh, sorry, in the east, northeast part of the classroom? That's how, diba? They are very specific. Kahit yung pag-lean mo lang ng ganyan, meron din silang direction. Because of that, they are very good in terms of um, distinguishing which are uh, what place they should go. Alam nila magaling sila pagdating sa mga directions. Even their hello, yung mga ipag hello nila, halimbawa nakita mo sila, they will not ask you like, what's up? Their translation of what's up is, where are you going? So, more likely, they focus on what? They focus on the direction. And that is linguistic determinism. Our thoughts, our knowledge, our ideas is mostly based from the language that we have. Meaning, okay, it is a theory, yeah? remember it is just a theory. Meaning, kapag daw mas maraming language, ang master mo, mas matalino ka. Maybe that's why Jose Rizal is very intelligent, right? Because he knows a lot of uh, nine languages, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? So, that is linguistic determinism. Linguistic, uh, linguistic relativity a while ago, our language affected, okay, our what? Our language affected our behavior, our attitude. However, for linguistic determinism, our language affected what? can we know about a certain thing? So, these two are different. Are we clear? Naintindihan po ba yung pinagkaida ng dalawa? Do you have questions? Yes, Jacqueline? Okay. I guess naman ni Jacqueline. Okay. okay. The second is ethnopoetics. So, ethnopoetics, what is it? Um, it is a study of verbal arts, okay, wherein our language are primarily spoken. We discussed about that. Language is primarily spoken. And people started to create unique oral performances because of the language they are speaking. Remember, di ba, um, when we discuss about the spoken and written history, um, may mga chanting, um, uh, oral literature, mostly I oral. And in ethnopoetics, um, it is based on oral, okay? or maybe a verbal way of language and culture. Speaking, singing, laments, phrases, prayers, yeah. Pero verbal can also be written na. Pinagkaiba lang naman ay verbal and non-verbal. Not the gestures, more likely, they focus on the spoken and the written chants, um, say is a song, prayers, and prophecies. So, what does it uh, say? What is what is this theory all about? Okay. So there is this philosophy that no two languages are the same. Although, for example, Filipino use English language and 
American use English language. Although they use the same language, still, there is a differences that you can see, right? Diba nga sabi kay Nina, um, yung English ng mga Filipino, more on, at siyang big, at anong basa siyang bigkas. But in the other country, it's not like that, right? What they do is, what, how they pronounce it is different as to how Filipinos pronounce it. That is why, okay, even in our um, history, okay, the ethnopoetics that are discovered, the, chan the chantings, the, uh, the songs, the prophecies that are produced way, way back on the old times is also different. Okay? The words in which different society lives are distinct words. And let us see. Um, yung lalaki na doon sa si Cherokee, di ba? Ang ginagawa niya, he produces a different sound. And even though he produces a different sound, still, di ba, iba pa rin yung sound na makukuha kapag nakuha yun ng ibang society. So, it's like that. The culture is distinct with the language. Methodology. So, paano naman nila inaral in terms of ethnopoetics? So, it is a handwritten dictation. Then, na, na uso na kasi yung mga writing formats. Um, prose, we translated in order to reveal poetic features. So, yun, um, inanalyze nila isa-isa. Like, how is it different? How is it the same with the culture? And they discovered in ethnopoetics that no languages are the same. Para siyang fingerprint. Yung language natin, it's like our own finger, uh, fingerprint, our identity. You remember sociolic and idiolic, di ba? Even though, di ba tayo? Parehas tayo, mga Pilipino naman tayo, mga English speakers tayo. Eh, parehas naman tayo may pinag-aralan. However, we still have differences in terms of using the English language. And that is our idiolic. Okay? So that's um, the principle behind the ethnopoetics. It mostly focuses on uh, the culture way, way back. Now, the third is the most interesting part, which is the oral gesture theory. Okay? My sir Richard did have page. Now, um, it reveals that people, okay, if this one, okay, if the ethnopoetics focus on the verbal, the oral gesture most probably focus on the gesture or the non-verbals. Sino sabi na we are not really primarily spoken individuals? Ang una daw natin na-discover ay yung mga gestures natin. Okay? The evolution of sound is connected with our gesture. Nagawa daw yung mga sounds, nagaroon daw ng mga uh, words it is because of the gesture that is produced. Okay? So, let's see. If you use this uh, gesture, what does it mean? Let's see. It's like pointing. You're pointing your finger like that. And it ibig sabihin ng gesture na yan? Kapag ikaw, huwag ikaw na ganyan. Okay, that's correct, Camila. Don't do that. It's like, you're prohibiting the person to do the action. How about this one? Ganyan. Okay, yung number one kanina, it's reprimanding. That's correct also. How about this one? What does it mean? Okay, correct. It's money. Okay, we are referring to money. This one. Yes, the okay sign. Yes, pwede rin. Okay. Correct, pwede rin yan. How about this one, the third? Good job! Yes, correct. Delicious. Mm-hmm. We can also say that. Nice. And everything's okay. How about this one? It's like your mouth. It's pouting like that. <laughs> di ba? Alam na alam natin yan. Yung tayo magaling eh. Yung uso, di ba? Whenever we... Ma, saan yung ano? Saan yung, saan yung bag ko? Doon. Di ba? Di ba? Ganun yung pointing doon. Kaya nga siguro yung word na doon. Baka lang ito ah. Kasi nga di ba? Ang sabi sa oral gesture, di ba? Yung sabi sa oral gesture, yung mga sounds daw, 
Hindi pa pa cute. Hindi cute. Kung magpapaut. <laughs> But yeah, it's, well, it, it's most likely uh, the direction. Okay? Yeah, like you're pointing it to someone. Okay? Kaya nga parang, pag sinabi niya yung word na doon, para kang naka-ano, di ba? Naka-pout, doon. Pwede ma-prove ng doon, yung word na doon, yung oral gesture theory na yung oral gesture theory, yung mga words down natin, di ba? Yung mga sounds down natin na bubuo dahil sa gesture na ginagawa. Okay? So, that's how oral gesture is all about. Okay? Can you give, gusto lang, kasi gusto lang kaya Tayo, <laughs> Can you give me other example of um of uh, gestures? Okay. Can you give me other example? You can raise your hand. Kung may hirap ang kaitayap, kasi gesture yan, guys. <laughs> Pwede rin mag-oncom kayo, di ba? Think of other example of gestures that has a meaning. Anyone? Thumbs up. There's already a, a thumbs up. This um is um is Wink. Okay, Edgy. What do we mean when you wink? Ano yan? Ano yung sabi niya pag nagwink? Napo ko wink ba? Fist bump. Okay. What do we mean by fist bump, Jacqueline? Ano nang ano yan? Sa pag fist bump. Fist bump. Pals po, ano sila, parang kay hello nila ganun sa TV. Okay. Hindi yung face bump, Jacqueline, yung sumasabog, ha? Bump yun. B-U-M-P. <laughs> Any other? Ano pa ba? Okay, so, I think, ano? Yeah, the peace sign. Peace. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah, those are the gestures. <laughs> those are the gestures that we have, okay? Gestures that we include. That, according to Sir Richard, <laughs> oo. <laughs> ano yung sabihin ng oo? Sige nga, is para maranan. Kapag nag-oo ka, ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Actually, medyo hindi pa ako familiar. <laughs> is para maranan? Next term? Ma'am, hindi <laughs> ko din po sure. Ano tayo po tayo ako? Hindi ko po din sure. Ano pa yung sorry na ako? Ano ata ma'am, si, si Chak ma'am, alam po ata ni Chak yan. Ano ibig sabihin na ako? Sorry. Ma'am, <laughs> alam mo tawa na ma'am eh. Sige, isang umo na lang. Isang umo na lang, day one. <laughs> para kung umuungol mo, wag na ko. <laughs> Ayun ma'am, para, okay. na, para nagpapakit ma'am, nagpapakit. Okay, nagpapakit. Nagpapaawa. Ah, okay, pala yun. <laughs> please, ah, okay. So it means please. Sa Pinas, okay. So, ganun bang, hindi ko sure ito ah, Japan ba? Nang, hindi ko sure, ano yung iba to? Jap- Japanese ba yung uwo na term? <laughs> ganun na, sorry naman kayo na ganit. Okay, so, ayun, uh, it looks like also, when we say uwo, parang pouting din siya. So, yung mga expressions natin, it can create, okay, it can seductive yun. Ah, okay, thank you for that, Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it means as a sexual, parang you're asking for uh, a sexual need. Okay, thank you for that search. Okay, so that's it. Um, the way we pronounce a word, okay, is related okay, with the gestures. Ayan yung theory. However, okay, however, there are some criticisms about this oral gesture theory because they say that it can be possible for some words, but it will not be possible for others. For example, this one, my car is broken, so I took my wife's car to get to work. So, paano to, paano mo to gagawin? Gesture. My car. Magdaganong ka ba ng car? No, di ba? Wala naman. Hindi ka makakagawa ng gesture out of the, ano, my car is broken. Di ba? Paano, paano yun? So, it's difficult. Kaya, ayun yung criticisms. 
um, for this theory. Not everything can be turned, yeah, sign languages lang. But then, um, yung mga sign language, para meron din siyang specific per, <laughs> like specific part, di ba? So, it can't be like sign language lang. Kailangan yung talaga yung origin. Yes, magiging interpretative dance, pero it will be vague. Hindi natin pag-i-gets. Ano pa sinasabi niyo to? Diba? So, that's it. Kahit ano pang i-action mo dyan, may hihirapan yung, yung mag-i-interpret kung ano ba yung sinasabi mo. Okay? So, that's all. Uh, that's what I'm saying about the oral gesture. Okay? So, um, let's uh, the end of the discussion. So, let's have a recap. What is the difference? First question, what is the difference between linguistic determinism to linguistic relativity? Anyone? Describe. What's the difference? Yes, for Lynn. Um, linguistic relativity po, it is how language shapes our behavior and attitudes. While linguistic determinism, the language, ano po, ano, the language ano, teach us to know a certain things po, or we need to ano, know a specific things po, because of a specific language. Yun po. Yes, that's correct for Lynn. You got it right. Jacqueline, do you have additional thoughts? Ganun din po. Magkaiba lang ng magpapaliwanag po. Okay, that's correct. How about in ethnopoetics? What is the um, focus when we talk about ethnopoetics? Can you give me some terms that are related with ethnopoetics? What can we relate? What are the words? What are the things we can relate when we talk about ethnopoetics? Uh, may I call Kelsey? Just give me some um, specific terms about ethnopoetics. Ms. Aguilar? Anyone? How about Ms. Uh, Osorio? Ms. Lexi? The gets for your ethnopoetics. If not, you will go back to that. Rituals, yes. yes, Lexi. Rituals, okay. Rituals, what about the rituals? Okay, correct, Camilla. It's culture, okay. It's uh, the ethno linguistic of the language itself, okay. And lastly, it will be about the oral gesture. Okay, ayun lang yung ina na natin na ba? Um, we discussed a while ago where in our gesture, okay, is the origin of the written and spoken languages that we have right now. Okay, so that will be uh, all. And thank you so much. <music>